Uh, Alright, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue with the animation series uh, for uh, BioBlender. So today we're going to go on uh, uh, through some examples on how to rig proteins that we import using BioBlender. Uh, however, keep in mind that uh, rigging is general among uh, uh, the entire animation field. So if you learn or if you see another YouTube videos on how to rig characters, on how to rig uh, all different meshes then that can be applied to proteins uh, so today I'm only gonna go through the basics uh, because I'm not an expert rigger uh, uh, in fact people that uh, people that do animation and rigs uh, that's their entire job uh, however I do know how uh, some basic examples and we're gonna go through some basic examples uh, today uh, in fact you don't need much complexity uh, dealing with proteins uh, unless you want very very detailed motion uh, but otherwise uh, these simple examples will work for most of the cases alright so here uh, the one we're gonna do today is gonna be uh, the spike protein from the coronavirus that uh, we have here in uh, pink uh, but I also have a DNA polymerase here of a more complex uh, rig that you can see uh, I can go ahead and uh, grab this rig and then if I press uh, control tab and if I uh, make sure you have Pi menus activated so make sure you have Pi menus activated uh, and then you can press uh, uh, control tab and then go to pose mode and as you see here the bones change to blue and then I can go ahead and grab one of these bones and press R to rotate and then as you see the mesh deforms according to this bone so I can have a motion of a brain that does like this I can also modify this bone in the back to have motion in the back of course if you go to extreme uh, you're gonna as you see you're gonna break your uh, mesh uh, but otherwise if you do sh uh, small motions uh, and that also depends on your rig you can have it uh, work uh, you can also have fill weights uh, but we're not going to go into that detail but as you see I can then rotate this and then it would rotate everything uh, this one uh, it's uh, the parent bone so this basically moves everything as you can see uh, but today we're going to go on through a much simpler example let me know if you want to go uh, in future videos on through this detail uh, but for now let uh, me uh, get out of pose mode so back to object let, let me delete that object and uh, today we're gonna focus on this spike protein uh, so basically uh, the spike uh, protein has this uh, RBD domain on the top uh, or receptor uh, bound domain and then uh, what we do is that we can uh, animate that one so because this this one uh, for the spike protein it is know that it has these two conformations open and close so we can basically animate that open and close of course if I go to extreme as you see I break the mesh but we can animate this and that's what we're gonna try to do today uh, so uh, let me get out of pose mode oh that's not the way to get out uh, alright so let me go ahead uh, and press control tab and then go on to uh, object mode and let me go ahead and uh, delete this armature and then delete this object as well and then I have I have hidden uh, the PDB here uh, or the protein here so this is the protein that I imported uh, with uh, BioBlender the way I imported it was uh, just by typing 6VYB this is gonna be the spike in the open conformation and then I just did a protein surface and low um, alright so once I've done that uh, what I'm gonna do is going to add uh, armature and then once I add an armature, uh, oh, for some reason I had, uh, let me go back, for some reason I have the um, uh, the 3D cursor over there, uh, uh, we can change that if we do um, shift S and then uh, cursor to world origin. Uh, so your cursor should be in the world origin, mine uh, was not for some reason. Uh, I don't see, uh, I have it disactivated here, 3D cursor, alright, there we go, so now we can see the 3D cursor is in the origin, and now I can go ahead, add uh, armature, uh, and there you go, we get a bone here, uh, so I'm going to scale it down, uh, press S to scale it down, uh, now it disappears, so we no longer see it, so what we do is go into the, our armature settings, and then just tap in front here, uh, click in front, that way we always see our bones in uh, our bones in front of the mesh. I'm gonna press G, C, and move it down here. I'm gonna press uh, 7 to change view. Uh, that's looking good. Then I'm gonna press 3 to change view. Uh, that's also looking pretty good. Uh, let me look at it from this way. So we want to get to this spike, uh, uh, to this RBD up here. So maybe let me go ahead and move it. Uh, no, th that's fine. Then I'm gonna go uh, press tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, press E to extrude. And then I'm going to extrude a bone uh, over here. That way. So as you see, it's not uh, 
I gotta change views here just to make sure everything's lining up so that uh, place is lining up. I'm basically pressing 1, 7 and 3 on the numpad to change different views so that is lining up here uh, correctly and then uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is extrude, uh, press the top again and extrude one more time all the way up here and uh, make sure everything lines up so press 1 that's looking good press number 3 that's also looking good and press number 7 uh, again it's looking good uh, so that's uh, everything I need to do for now. Now I'm gonna go out of edit mode into object mode and I'm gonna go ahead and select the mesh first then select the armature and then I'm gonna press Control P to parent and then I'm gonna select uh, with automatic weights uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and press that it's gonna take a little bit uh, it's gonna calculate basically all the weights for the mesh uh, that determine how uh, it deforms um, so this is gonna take uh, a little bit of time it also depends on how many uh, polygons your mesh has uh, so this is a pretty if we go into edit mode it has a lot of uh, vertices uh, we could have uh, remeshed this uh, before we started but for now there is no problem it's still gonna work uh, we can go into pose mode now and then select our bone and press R to rotate and as we see we are already getting that effect uh, another thing that we can do is that if we double press R so RR then we're gonna get uh, a little more freedom on how to rotate on how to move this object right because now we get all 360 uh, degrees both ways uh, all right and now how to animate this so I'm gonna start uh, in this uh, close conformation right there as you see that uh, I close uh, I move the RBD there so it looks close and then I'm gonna press I and then insert a keyframe rotation uh, then I'm gonna let me move this up I'm gonna grab that bone again I'm gonna go maybe to frame 50 and then I'm gonna press uh, I'm gonna look up here press RR again and maybe, uh, no, in fact, I'm just going to press R once. Uh, that way I can move it this way because the bone is well set up. Oh, actually, it's moving that way as well. So I'm going to just go ahead and move it this way. Uh, so that's a little bit too much. Let me go ahead and fix that. So you just have to play this so you don't break your mesh. So that's looking all right. Uh, so that's what we're going to use. And then we're going to press I, uh, rotation. And now... Oh, uh, now what uh, we're going to do is basically go uh, one more time into our uh, close confirmation. So we go to 100 now. And then once we've gone to 100, then I'm going to press uh, R again and then have it go back to this confirmation here. Uh, so I'm just moving it so it lines up again as we had it before. Uh, all right. So that's looking uh, good again. Maybe change it a little bit. Um, you can also move it. Uh, but for now, let's leave it like so uh, you can uh, ha uh, take more time and uh, align it properly for now I'm gonna press I insert rotation and then we're gonna uh, now visualize this and see how it looks so as you see it's uh, opening and closing and then it ends how can we make this uh, kind of keep going so one thing that we can do is if we press here and we go on to uh, change this to the graph editor and then I'm gonna select my armature here uh, so I'm gonna go back to uh, so the uh, all right so select the act, uh, the correct bone and then uh, you're gonna go ahead and uh, maybe change all the interpolations to linear uh, so we can pr uh, grab them all right click uh, interpolation you can play with this for example you can check something like elastic and then you can see how that looks so that's gonna be yeah that's <laughs> not too good uh, and I miss some keyframes here so I'm gonna press Ctrl C so I, I'm gonna make sure I grab everything and then I'm gonna right click interpolation I'm gonna try a linear uh, that way it's a linear motion uh, so as, as you see maybe this is a better angle for it alright so once we've done that uh, we're gonna uh, again select our uh, different uh, uh, rotations here we have four axes so we're gonna press N and then select one of them and then modifier add modifier uh, cycles and then we can do this uh, for the rest of them uh, cycles and then we can do just uh, for the other two cycles and then last one uh, cycles and then if we go and play this animation from the beginning then once it gets to 100 it should uh, uh, begin again and as you see it's uh, cycling between that conformation so this protein is gonna just basically do that uh, forever uh, you can play with the initial and starting frame to have it loop completely uh, but for now uh, this is how to uh, rig a basic protein uh, let me know if you like this video, uh, give a like uh, and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. Again, if you want uh, uh, me to try to rig a hard, uh, 
different protein that's a little more, more complex, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you want a more complicated, uh, more advanced tutorial, you can find uh, plenty of Blender tutorials on how to rig, and all that uh, can be applied to uh, proteins. Uh, all right, so until the next one, uh, see you.